What's up YouTube, it's Heretic here, and welcome back as we have another acceleration-based stage 2 deck for you guys today. This is a deck similar to the one piloted by Chris Chemansky, who at the Madison Regionals took Metagross GX all the way to the finals, almost won. I was rooting for him to win, obviously, because this is the rogue deck of the two compared to uh, the best coin list that ended up getting first place. Which I uh, also shout out congrats to Michael Primawat on his fifth regional championship, tied with Israel Sosa for the most. So I guess which one of them can get six first, right? Um, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and look at this. Uh, we have a 434 Metagross GX line. That is huge. And so is Metagross's HP. It has 250 hit points. That is massive, almost impossible to OHKO. And Metagross has an awesome ability called Geotech System, which allows you to, once during your turn, accelerate either a metal or a psychic energy from your discard pile to your active Pokemon. So that's a pretty cool ability to have. It also has Giga Hammer as its big attack. Two metal and a colorless deals 150 damage, unable to use Giga Hammer next turn. Which, you know, it's just like Volcanion EX's attack. Only 20 more damage. And then you have Algorithm GX, which is your opponent plays end next turn. <laughs> if they can't, they probably lose. Because this this uh, attack lets you search your deck for any five cards, up to five cards, and add them to your hand. Which is bonkers. So if you manage to Algorithm GX and your opponent does not shuffle your hand back in with an N, or I guess a red card, I don't know. Um, it's pretty much would be an N almost always. Uh, then you probably have just won the game. So, uh, that's pretty crazy. It's like a much, it's like a bigger, badder version of, uh, Drampa's Big Wheel GX. So, Metagross served as, as our energy accelerator and our featured attacker. We also have three copies of Alolan Vulpix. Now, I'm pretty sure Chris didn't play this many. I believe Connor Fenton did, however. He bubbled out of top eight at ninth place, which, uh, I feel really bad for him because he had the same amount of match points as which was 30 as the uh, eighth place finisher. So he it was not a clean cut. He did bubble, and I believe if I recall correctly, he ran three uh, Volpix. So uh, I know Chris did run Volpix as well. No need for nine tails. Volpix is here for Beacon, which for no energy lets you search your deck for up to two Pokemon and put them in your hand. So really helpful in getting stage two set up. Uh, you guys may have seen that in my video with. Uh, Decidueye, Vile Plume, Ninetales last week, and we have it here again, even without the Ninetales just setting up our Metagross line. Two top of Lele GX to search out supporters, also has a very solid attack, and then one Delmize. This, I saw Chris ran this. I'm not certain that this is necessary, but it is a fun little card. Uh, 70 damage for a uh, perfectly capable attacker, since we have all our energy acceleration. Uh, psychic type attacker, and it also makes um, it also makes our attack with um, with Metagross do 10 more damage, which is kind of fun, based on its Steelworker ability. So this is a nifty little attacker that I may or may not end up cutting. But for now, Chris used it in his list, I saw that, so I got the idea from him, so shout out again. So we're trying that out. <laughs> Item cards, 4 versus Secret, 4 Ultra Ball. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, that's the norm. Three rare candies only this time, because we do have the Vulpixes, we have a very thick line of Metagross with three of the Matangs. So, early game you're going to fall behind, but late game of 250 HP is almost insurmountable, especially with Max Potion. We run two Max Potions, since we can discard our energy anyway, we're going to do that usually to retreat after we attack. So, um, you can just heal then, or you can just discard them anyway, and then just Max Potion, or yeah, Max Potion discard, and then just use... Geotech system, re-accelerate, right out of the discard. So that's pretty awesome. Part of what makes the 250 HP almost impossible to overcome, obviously. Two field blowers, since we are staring at a situation where uh, Garbotoxin, much like the Vega Vault, could be a huge problem. You could always, of course, just take the preferred method and Lysander it up and kill it. But if not, we do have a pair of field blowers to uh, be able to accelerate energy in order to make an attack happen when Garbotoxin is there on the board. And then finally one Rescue Stretcher just to be able to get back lost evolution line pieces and such if they are sick and worn away early. Or if too many Beldums and Matang or yeah, too many Beldums and Matangs get knocked out. Supporters, we've got four Sycamore, four N, or it, it, no, I'm sorry, three N. 
I'm used to having 4N and everything now, but 4 Sycamore, 3N, 2 Lysander, um, 1 Skyla, again, stage 2 deck, be able to search rare candy, etc., etc., 1 Bridget, same use as Beakable, first turn, literally Bridget, bam, bam, get out a bunch of uh, Beldums, and then Beacon for your, uh, for your evolutions. One copy of Karen. This this card is so good against Vespa Coin, it's crazy. Uh, we saw Chris almost win the finals by using this. I think Zoroark definitely played a hand in uh, had a hand in the way that match ended up, but can't argue against Pram. The dude is an incredible player winning that regional. So, nonetheless, I think Karen is just a fantastic card for this deck to counter a deck that could otherwise be rather awkward in terms of its matchup, um, especially with Flareon being able to splash into Vespaquin and allow it to take OHKOs on Metagross, which is pretty scary. So we do have the Karen, and then we also have Pokemon Ranger as another way just to be able to uh, to loop out of Metagross' attack. Uh, you could also run Olympia, which I know Chris ran Olympia. I believe Connor ran Ranger. And then Teammates, again, you fall behind early. Teammates is there. Uh, this list is overall, I think it's actually much closer to Connor's list than it is to, uh, to Chris's, but... I mean, hey, they both have the points to get into top eight. Just that, sadly, Connor bubbled, which sucks. But, um, I'm going to continue on. We got one lone copy of Floatstone here, and then three Choice Band, just to be able to hit 180 damage or 190 with Delmise. And then we got eight of the, uh, Metal Energies, two Psychic, so just so Delmise can attack. Uh, having a Psychic Energy is not really bad since one of the energy cost, or one of the energy in the cost for Giga Hammer is colorless. And then also, hey, in a pinch you could use Tapu Cure. You know, it doesn't really hurt. You could definitely go nine and one. Um, it's it's whatever. So uh, anyway, we're gonna go ahead and take this Metagross thing for a spin and see if we can't pull a couple of Ws out with it. All right, so it looks like we're going Dark and Dragon. Is Dark Dragon still a thing? That'd be interesting. And so we have the Metagross ready to go. And this seems like, I mean, barring just an absolutely massive Dark Pulse, this seems like a pretty decent matchup for Metagross. Of course, we draw a Mulligan here to start out. And now, as I said, I have seen some builds of this deck running Cell Galio, which, while certainly powerful, seems like it would be just a little too clunky to play two stage two launch, but definitely appealing if you can make it work. Because unlike Metagross, who tap, who caps out at 180 damage with the use of Choice Band, the, um, the, uh, Solgaleo GX tops out at 230 before, it, or just, I shouldn't say tops out, deals 230. What it tops out at is much greater, able to take any KO. So we open with only a Delmise, but we are going to get that first turn Bridget as long as we still have this hand. I don't remember who won the coin toss. And it wouldn't even be worth playing an N right now anyway, because he put four Pokemon on his board. So his hand size is not big. So, okay, and, oh, it looks like we're going to see the Dragonair. All right, this was a thing apparently over in, uh, over in Birmingham this past weekend, from what I heard. So this should be pretty interesting to see Dragonair and then, of course, we do see the Giratina, which, other than being able to have double dragon energies on it, doesn't really pose much of a threat. We don't play special energies. So, we don't play Megas. I guess he could try to lock us out of, uh, well, what could, I guess he could try to lock us out of Choice Band or Float Stone. That's really about it. Alright, so we see an Ultra Ball here. Plays on Max Elixir and whips it, it looks like. And then discards Hoopa since he's already out of the main board. He doesn't really need it, so I'm guessing Chainman or Lele will come out here. So there is top of Lele. And he can get whatever he pleases now. My guess is I think my money's on second more. Unless that one card is that precious that he doesn't want to lose it. You know, maybe pull an N, maybe if it's like a dragon air. Otherwise, I guess for I guess for what I'm hoping for here, I'm, I'm hoping that he pulls the second one. There it is. Alright. There's no setup supporters that are really needed. You've got a full board already, dude. So he throws a Versus Seeker away, and so seven new cards will come out. And we'll see if we get an Energy Rush here. Dragon are definitely an interesting way to take this deck with all of the Garbodor being around. 
course, if you play the Fighting Fury belt as opposed to Choice Band, Darkrai would become rather difficult to KO, at least before they hit a Field Blower. But with the presence of Field Blower in format, I think players are learning that Fighting Fury belt in most decks is generally not worth it when compared to Choice Band. Only because that extra 40 HP is never a guarantee to, to stick when your opponent hits. So we do see a Dark Energy come down from from hand onto Dark Rye, and that's it. He holds the other six cards, passes his turn. We have an interesting hand here, to say the least. So it would be actually kind of nice if he were to do us a favor and knock that Delmize out. And we can just discard the two supporters here since we have Versus Seeker. So let's find Lele, and we won't get the Volpix this, this game, which sucks, but we'll get Lele into Bridget. Which is more than welcome enough. We'll also be able to hold on to that magic number of four cards in the event of Stadium plus Delinquent happening. So, we get Bridget here, which is going to get three copies of Veldum. And we have all of our Metagross lines in deck. We have one rare candy, and it looks like we priced a couple of rare candy. That's the part that sucks. But if he knocks us out, we would get teammates, which means we could pull a Metagross from the deck. So, I think it's just going to be a pass turn. Hope he doesn't Lysander. If he does, well, we got three of them. So, we'd only be losing one, and we would still gain access to teammates here. Delmize is, however, weak against Dark. So, a Dark Pulse with just an attachment would be enough. Instead, it looks like he's going to attach back here, and he's going to play an end, which is fine. Since it doesn't look like he's going to take a KO, we might as well just go ahead and play that end. And, oh my goodness, okay, thankfully we found an end of our own, because that is an ugly hand. It'd be great if we had a couple of rare candies to go with it. Let's get two uh, Metagross into play. You see he plays an Ultra Ball here, so I guess his Dragonair is about to come out. And I will have to read Dragonair when I see it, because I don't remember exactly how it works. We do see a Dratini. Got two Verse Seekers gone. I'm pretty okay with that. And there is Dragoner. So it is a, it is off an attack. Dragon's Wish. And we'll see. Need to read this. During your next turn, you may attach any number of energy. Oh my goodness. That's kind of crazy. All right. So that's how it works. So he needs to he needs to find a way out of the active spot now. If he wants to use Dragon's Wish this turn. But that's scary because we can't even target down the energy until it's been on the board and he's had a chance to attack with it. To, take, to put it all to use through Dark Pulse. And it doesn't even say basic energy, it is all energy, so that includes Double Dragon. And he could just drop Professor's Letters or something like that, or late game, you know, play like Fisherman. Again, like, I don't really know. I haven't really been testing the stacks, so I don't really know. I probably should put it on my radar. Maybe I'll be able to give you guys a list here in a couple weeks. Test it. So, anyway, we don't get a whole lot. He does have a choice band down. I guess we could field blower it, but I think we might actually just be okay saving that. Go ahead and drop an energy there, and we're just going to end these metagross back into the deck. I'm not about to throw two right now. Once again, we don't find a whole lot, but at least it's better than what we had. We do have a Matang here. We can put that into play, and I think that's going to be all she wrote for the turn. No reason to choice banders yet. So my guess is he's going to have either an Olympia, a Floatstone, a Switch, an Escape Rope, something. Okay, Altar of the Moon, that will work. Yeah. So he can retreat into Dragonair. You see a Max Elixir here. And I think the real beauty of Dragonair comes in the Garbodor matchup when he's not really wanting to play a whole bunch of Max Elixirs. And instead we able okay, so we are able to see we see a max elixir and an attachment from hand. I still am curious to see if he's gonna go for the dragon wish here. It seems like the play. Based on what is in his hand though, he could also just retreat from the other dark ride. If he has a Lysander, he could take out Matang before it becomes Metagross. But we are gonna see Dragon's Wish here, it looks like. And where's Pokemon Ranger when you need it? And there's the Hex Maniac as well. Oh man. So even if we get Metagross out, we won't be doing anything fancy with it. And, oh man, I really hate to end him here. Only because he's only got three cards in his hand. Lele is not an option. So, 
All right, so I think we just attach this energy. Oh my god. Do we Sycamore away a pair of energy? I suppose that's not such a bad thing, given that we can just accelerate it with Metagross from this card. We would lose our other Lele. But, you know, he knows what he's got in hand, so he's got to have something. But I don't want to give him six cards, because the odds are then he would still have something to work with. We find the fourth Beldum. We didn't really get much else. Uh, we do get one Metagross into play, so at least it's a big body. But that's about where the magic ends, and I guess we can play this. We can take a stadium card from him, that's his retreat method. Since Dragonair does have two retreat, and we can take that choice ban from him as well. But not much else. We're sitting on two Metagross, and we do not have a Matang or a Rare Candy to work with. And maybe he'll play, I don't know, he, he won't play in here, this would just be a second more. Yeah. We, only got, we only have four cards in our hand. Okay, he actually does have an N in there. Really would do me a favor if he would knock this thing out, sir. We do see a double dragon come down onto Tina, and another double dragon come down onto Tina. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. He's at 180 damage right now. There's 200. Oh my goodness. Giga Hammer, you are going to need to uh, play a role here for Remus. So 200 with one more energy. There's the choice band. Yeah, with one more energy, he will be able to uh, administer a KO if he can Lysander up out of gross. Of course, he would need to find his stadium or another method of switching. So we'll, we'll just see Dragon's Wish again. And we draw the Versus Seeker. That is, um, that's something I'm thankful for here. Um, we can't really afford to play the second one, though. So, again, unfortunately, we are going to have to end him here. I, I don't want to throw all this away. If we didn't have the Rescue Stretcher in hand, maybe it wouldn't be so bad. But with that Stretcher in hand, that is a painful, painful thing to have to do. So we do find a Matang and a Rare Candy Metagross here. We'll be able to get some stuff out. And that will give us plenty of plenty of power. Now we do have two slots. We could put two energy on the Delmise and retreat it. Next turn we could Ultra Ball and get another copy of Metagross in play. And with three Metagross on the board, you had better believe some crazy stuff can happen. There's a field blower, so we're gonna lose our choice ban now, which is also pretty relevant because we need that to be able to get the OHKO on his Dark Ride. And another double dragon energy comes down. And a max elixir. So if he hits this max elixir, he can actually pay the retreat cost. So there it is. He now has enough energy in play to oh there's another one. But he can he can just pay this retreat cost and then just bring up Darkrai with the Choice Band, Lysander up, but it looks like we're going to see Sycamore instead, actually. He would have been able to Lysander up the Metagross and knock it out. And there's a Professor's Letter, oh my goodness. This is a lot of energy. We only got one, it looks like. Now, how many else does he have in hand after that for all You're going to see another energy go on the Lele, and his board is loaded. And there's the Altar of the Moon, so he's not even going to have to discard anything to retreat. Question, again, as I've been saying all along, is... My guess is he's going to sit there, actually, for another turn. I don't think he wants to retreat and knock out the Delmines. I don't think... I, I think the smart play here, at least playing from his perspective, at least from what I can see, would be to wait until he can Lysander, which could be next turn, based on... He's got five cards left in deck. Still should have a Lysander and a Versier, but he is running low on resources. That's something that's worth noting here. Has not drawn a prize card yet. There are resources missing. And this may even be a scenario where we could Lysander up the Shaman. He's gonna pass yep, he's gonna pass his turn again. We draw Karen. Now, I don't want to put any more cards back in his deck. But we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight darkness and three dragons. So we don't have a way, I mean I guess we could. Uh, use, we could double Metagross here and uh, try to do things that way. 
The Vulpix and the Karen certainly aren't serving a purpose right now. I guess we actually could retreat and attack Darkrai, but we would not be able to, uh... We wouldn't be able to really do anything else. We wouldn't be able to knock it out, anything like that. So I think instead we just go pull the Metagross out of the back. And that's just going to be put into play. And we could actually retreat here and do something pretty cool. So I think Lysander on the Shaman. And we do have those Psychic Energies in here. So we're going to use Geotech System here twice to bring energy onto this thing. And Anchor Shot is a fun little attack because it prevents retreating, but we don't have the third energy to take advantage of. So we will accelerate two energy cards and then simply use them to retreat. And, oh yeah, he's got Ultra of the Moon. I don't know what I was thinking there. We only needed one. And we will Algorithm to get five cards from the deck. All right, so Rare Candy, Metagross. Um, I have to assume one of these things is going to get KO'd. Lysander sounds good. Choice Band sounds wonderful. And let's see, maybe just something to draw cards with after that. Um, yeah, we've got lots of cards. We'll take this one. So Algorithm GX will pull five cards, and dude, if you have an N, you need to play it. Because <laughs> otherwise, that is the perfect hand. So this, much like Big Wheel GX, basically, this, this GX attack basically says your opponent plays an N. And if they don't, then they are probably in for a world of pain. Now, I actually wish we would have gotten the energy discard here. We don't have an energy in the discard pile, which is a problem. But the idea of having four Metagross on the board at one time is just disgusting. Definitely would have been nice if we could have discarded that energy, though. Alright. We'll see what he does here. And it really, if he has an energy, if he doesn't have an energy, it may not even be worth attacking him. There's always a chance that he's got one or two darkness in the prizes. He can't use... Okay, so there's the end. He can't use double dragon energy. So, unless he's got an Olympia or a Switch, haven't seen any switching methods yet. We do get a uh, Metal Energy here. We get a Matang, so we could, we could uh, double step into Metagross here. And if he plays any cards, we could also play an N and try to make him draw more cards. Unless he takes a knockout, of course. If he takes a knockout, I don't think there's any way we can near him. And getting closer to that game. And that is another, so that is two ends. He's got three Seekers down. So again, and if that last Versus Seeker is in the prizes too, that could be a bit of a problem for him. Now, he didn't play any cards down. So I don't really think I want to attack him with Metagross here. I think if anything, I want to attack him with Delmines. We could try to stop him from retreating here for a turn. Um... I don't even know that I want anything off this ultra ball, to be completely honest. I guess we could take the whole fix. That's not really going to help. Get them the deck of that thing, and then I do think we just go ahead and play the second one. Alright, so we hit the candy and the metagross, yeah, which we don't really get access to right now. There is the choice band. We don't have a Lysander, though. We do have, let's see, two versus seekers left and another copy of Lysander somewhere. But I think we retreat here and we just bring this thing back up. We can uh, use Geotech system to accelerate one of these energies onto it. And Anchor Shot is going to be able to put 70 damage on the board. More importantly, it blocks him from retreating. And where's my bundle be when I need it? Oh, and he does have the escape rope. Oh, that sucks. Alright, I mean, I guess we could just give him the Matang. Like, I don't really think we need four Metagross on the board. Of course, if he has the Lysander, it really doesn't matter what we give him. So yeah, I'll give him the Batang for now. And if we knock out the Giratina, that's another fun thought. If we knock the Giratina out, then we should be able to take control. Unfortunately, he did find his escape rope, and he found it in the nick of time, which really sucks. We do have, what, two... Okay, we have enough energy in there, because we have energy. 
Yeah, he does have one Lysander. So that is going to be his last Lysander, unless he draws the Verse Seeker either off the Pride or is sitting on it. And 300 damage, holy cow. That's a little too much for my taste. Now we can just free retreat uh, Delmont. So we'll go ahead and bring that up. And oh, it would have been nice to get another uh, to get another uh, fancy little thing in the mob. I'm not hitting the name of another versus Seeker Lysander. So I think we're actually going to Skyla here and try to find just that. A Lysander. And no versus Seekers in here either. That that's uh that's a little scary. Two Seekers in the prize. So we get the Lysander out. And now we can just retreat into a Metagross. And we can start using Geotech system to power this thing up. And we do have the uh, choice band to take this KO. So he can't deck us out with that. Right, yeah, and the third one, we'll just go here since we don't have another energy. And there's the choice band. So we'd actually be hitting 190 right now. If we ran two Delmines, we'd be able to take this thing out, but we can just use Delmines' attack to try to do that. So, Giga Hammer is going to knock this Dark Cry out. Unfortunately, that is not the one with the choice man. He would have else actually dealt 100 or two, 330 damage. And we don't find a Versus Seeker there. So if he plays an N, which he has access to it, I don't see why he wouldn't. That could mess us up pretty badly. If he doesn't have an N, if he, does, if he doesn't have access to an N, we actually would just win this game, I think. By virtue of this little thing right here, unless he's got another switch card. And I think deck out is probably our our best method of winning this game. Really don't have a whole lot of other options. You see he's gonna play an Ultra Ball here. And he's losing valuable cards to shuffle back with an end here. Alright, so we do see a Giratina is pulled from the deck, and if you really- oh, oh no, you do not want to bench that. Granted, it does get an energy, but you do not want to put that down. That is not good, and that is also the last card in his deck. Now, he can't end himself out of this, so that would actually end the game. He can't take four prizes, I don't care how much damage you're doing. You can kill Metagross, but and he just realized it. Unless you've got like a super, yeah, I know he doesn't have it, a super rod or, or a rescue stretcher, that's the game, ladies and gentlemen. You have decked yourself. And we didn't even really, yeah, he's got the end, but it doesn't matter. You know, we didn't even win, I'm not even going to say that we, that I, I didn't win that game. He lost it. I don't care how much damage you can do, dude. It's, it doesn't matter. You definitely found an interesting out to this, but you have no cards left in back. Big game. So, we get a pretty fluky win right there. That was uh, a little silly of him to Ultra Ball for that card. Granted, I mean, he could have end, prolonged the game by three turns, stripped us of Lysander potentially, since we didn't draw it, and then won the game two turns later. Or one turn later, I should say. At most two, you know, and that and that would have been the way to do it, but alas, he does not. So we come away with a fluky, fluky win. And we take those, though, so we are going to go into game two here. Alright, this time we see a little bit of everything. I saw fighting and grass, so that's primarily probably what we're looking at. Because colorless and psychic, that's everything. That's Lele, that's Shaman... Shenanigans. We will get to go first. Awesome. So, once again, we're going to open with just the Delmize and a completely garbage hand. Oh my goodness. This is gross. So we're going to be relying on some Muldross here. That reveals nothing. Wow. That literally tells me nothing. Other than he runs double colorless. Wow. I guess if you're going to get a mold draw hand, that's the hand to get. And that fighting type could also be Suda It does have this Zygarde coin, but that doesn't mean anything. 
I mean, after all, we're using Fennekin's leaves. We do have them coined. It's whatever. Alright, he's finally got an active Pokemon. Let's see what it is. Yes, please. That did not help. That did not help either. <coughs> okay, so I guess we might as well just get an energy on it. We can always just use it to retreat. Have fuel for Metagross later. But that is gross. We have two supporters. Neither of them would have an effect right now. And so there's Skyfield. Oh, geez. This is Rayquaza. Okay, never mind. It's playing Bridget. Oh, okay, I wasn't thinking about that, so we're going to see Passimian here. And, no, we didn't find any Passimians. Enhanced Hammer? That's not going to help you. And again, my hand's not helping me, so go ahead. We do have a Fighting Resistance, which is kind of nice. Of course, he's probably going to try to attack us with Mew. Eh, that's whatever. Oh, my goodness, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. No, please don't donk me. Okay, we still drop pretty badly, but at least now we have an Ultra Ball for a Lele. Unless, of course, he donks us. Switching method and a double colorless will do it. No, he did not! Alright. So, I'm just going to go ahead and fill up the discard pile here. <clears throat> I only really need the one. Unfortunately, we do not have... Oh, maybe we're going to lose a, a Matang and a Candy here. We do have a Beldum Prize. Get the, the Volpix here, too. That wouldn't be a terrible idea. Because Volpix can pull Lele for next turn. So I think we're actually going to do that. And we, of course, we can just pay this for the cost. And we can Beacon here. So we'll get a Beldum and a Tapu Lele. Three Volpixes. I am nearly certain Chris Shemansky did not run three Volpixes. But nonetheless, it, uh, it, it proved to be a useful card here. Uh, it would have been nice to just have it in the active to start with. We would have been able to beat him last turn. But, oh, I guess not. Okay. Well, no, because we went first. It was first. Never mind. Alright, so we see a Sycamore here. Lots of supporters. Okay. Another N, Lysander, Versus Seeker, another Bridget. Alright, so there are all of the, uh, all of the... Monkeys are down, and, okay, Nest Ball, we probably have Mew, he also has a Rangaroo there, and we do see, oh, Yon, whoa, Yanma, that's an interesting choice. So we take Sky Return here, he gets his Shaman back for next turn, and, oh, I wish we had a way to KO that thing. Where was, where was his attack when we needed it? So we get Beldum down on the bench, we are going to get another turn of Beacon here, though. We're also going to get Tapu Lele for Bridget. And I want to make sure my second Lele is in here. Oh, it's not. Oh, that's not good. We may have to not bridge it here. We have, well, we have teammates. If he knocks us out, we can teammates. Yeah, that's fine. Doesn't matter even what gets knocked out. We can teammates. So we will get the Bridget, and this is going to get us three more. Uh, oh, I guess two more. Um, I mean, Skyfield's in play, whatever, we'll turn it back. We may actually be able to use that second Vulpix. And then we're going to use Beacon here and get, let's see, we have a, we have a Candy, uh, so we're going to get a Metagross and a Matang from the back. So, again, barring an N here, which, you know, if he sees what's coming, that's a pretty good scenario, that, a pretty likely scenario that we see one. Barring an N or a Lysander KO, we will have two Matangs and a Metagross next time. We do see he brings a Mega into play. Here's another Nest Ball for a Mew. Now, he's capping out, before factoring any, any added effects, he's capping out at 130. He does have the Choice Band to bring it to 160. Metagross's Resistance, however, would bring it down to 140, and of course there's the N. Wouldn't have expected anything less. 
So we find okay, we find Metagross, but we find no um, we find no copies of Rare Candy and no oh. Tangs. So Team Play is gonna take a prize card here. Yeah, and alright. So yeah, he grabs the teammates. Now I'm not sure that we have a KO in the works just yet, so you can hold on to that for now. And we do get a Matang off the top deck, so that will come into play. And another Volpix can actually go. We may actually end up using another one here. And another thing we can do is knock the uh, Skyfield right here. And taking Taku Lele off the board isn't the worst idea, but I don't know. I don't really know that we need to take it off. I think we might actually save a Field Blower for when he takes another KO. So we'll get two more Matangs here. We may end up using three copies of Alolan Vulpix this game just to get our setup because we do not have supporters. A Versus Seeker would suffice enough to get teammates, you know, since we're going to be getting KO'd here every time. At least for a bit. And hopefully those max potions can come into play down the stretch. Oh, what do we do? Alright, so there's another double colorless. Yeah, I think I did, yeah, I saw an enhanced hammer over here, and that doesn't, that doesn't hurt us at all. We don't play any special energy. <laughs> so that's probably going to be, if he's, you know, he's probably looking at that being his last prize. We get End again, and that is his fourth copy of End. He still has Versus Seeker. And, all right, we get a couple of Ultra Balls. We also get that all-important VS Seeker of our own, which will get teammates. And that should... Yeah, that, that will allow Metagross not only to come into play, but to start attacking. And Metagross, of course, has a monstrous 250 hit points. Okay. So, that's going to come up. And between Ultra Ball and teammates here, we will be able to get two Metagross into play. So... Ultra Ball here is going to go fine. Let's see. Energy in that. Throw. You guys can throw that last one. And that's going to get a Metagross out of the deck. And we actually realistically only need to get one in play this time, which is better than having it two. So we will pull the Metagross. <coughs> and we can actually just get the Tang with teammates because we do have the energy in hand. So teammates can come to fruition here. And that can get us up. A supporter for next turn. So we can get Matang here, and then we'll pull. Not a versus seeker. Let's see. I don't think he, unless unless he Lysanders, he won't be taking a prize card next turn. So I think we take some more. And then we attach this. Evolve Meta, the Metagross. Evolve in the tang, and we won't be at. I don't, I don't know that he plays delinquent anyway, but we won't be at risk for it only because we will be drawing a prize card. So we could also algorithm here, that would be an interesting way to go about things. So we could algorithm and then uh, try to make something happen there, but I think we're just going to get a hammer here. We're going to get this important, important knockout here on a lonely, a lonely little Mew that is going to allow him to play teammates. AKA, in the grand scheme of things, maybe not as key as we need it. And he also has the young Mega here, which, if it break evolves, would be able to lay down 100 damage. Not as much as the Mew, but close. And maybe key in getting a two hit knockout. So. We do need to get another Metagross up stat. So, of course, he's just going to pre repeat the Mew. Always an option. <laughs> and my guess is we'll see teammates here if he has it still. It looks like he doesn't. So, he copies team play. He's able to deal 110 damage. If he's holding a choice band for next turn, that could uh, be pretty effective. <laughs> so, we'll get another Matang out. And I don't even want to play this rescue stretcher right now. I think we're just gonna save one. All right, we find two more Metagross. All right, so that that gives us three, which is enough to retreat and then just continue to uh, drive out. Unfortunately, yeah. All right, that happened. 
So, we're going to pay this retreat cost here. So we, have, we have more than enough energy. What we don't have is enough metagross. Because, yeah, we have, the, we have this one, but we don't have it. We just evolved this system. We don't have the, the tag that is able to be involved. So, I think in this case, actually, we're just going to geotech system a single time. So it might actually be good to do it twice just to make sure. So, yeah, I don't see the hurt in that. And then we're gonna use algorithm GX here. And we're gonna find those max potions. And is there only one metagross here? We do have one in hand, so you can take a look. And let's see. I don't think it would hurt to have any books. And something else that we can look at doing here is his Pokemon all have low HP, and these guys are weak to Psychic, so Delmize could also do an attack here for Kaya. It would knock out any Mew or Passini, <laughs> leaving a single prize Pokemon up front. But with, with Metagross having as much HP as it does, I'm not too worried about that. He pretty much has to play an end here, which means he needs to play a versus Citra. So... Plays are limited as far as what he can do there. He's got an 8 card hand though, so if he got something else first... He, oh my god, he forfeits! <laughs> well, again, we take those. Um, my guess is maybe he didn't have a Versus Seeker, I don't know. With an 8 card hand, that's certainly surprising. If he doesn't have a way to counter that, he is in deep trouble though. Because at that point there will be 4 Metagross on board next turn, and Max Potion will come down to heal the one with another waiting in the wings, and that will create a virtually impossible scenario for him to overcome, even with single prize attackers. So that really is the strength of Metagross, just being able to do stuff like that. So that is Metagross GX just straight up, um, which I feel is definitely better than a Sol Galio build. I think the regionals results would agree with me. So congratulations to Chris Shemansky for getting second place with his Metagross build. Really awesome. Uh, I was rooting for you to win, Chris. I really was. Would have loved to see this deck win. Uh, I, mean, I know my list isn't identical to yours, but it's close. So uh, shout out there. And another, so much like uh, earlier this week with Vikavolt, another acceleration-based stage two deck that has proven to be pretty darn effective. That's Metagross, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.